I, how's that? If I project as well, that's okay. <laughs> I will really project. Uh, Matt Ritchie, I, uh, I am the Forestry Commission Scotland archaeologist. Uh, I am responsible for providing advice and guidance on the historic environment to the 10 forest districts in Scotland. Uh, so all of the slides you'll see are, are, are of archaeological sites uh, on your national forest estate. Uh, my role is very much uh, advice and guidance uh, in terms of protection of the archaeological resource, uh, but also in terms of conservation, so best practice, uh, conservation management, uh, and presentation. It's, it's all about uh, promoting uh, the resource uh, and the stories that they can tell. The real, uh, my, my archaeology is very visual. It's, it's about uh, uh, beautiful images, uh, and it's a I hope that you'll see the, the, the various strands of uh, 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 protection, conservation, and presentation are interwoven throughout. Uh, but some of it, obviously, uh, I like Marmite, you love or you hate. Uh, interweaving themes, uh, we have, uh, uh, it's all about innovative new archaeological survey techniques, uh, uh, such as uh, aerial, terrestrial, aerial and terrestrial laser scanning, uh, rectified photogra photographic photogrammetry, uh, terrain modelling, uh, low altitude aerial photography uh, alongside traditional uh, topographic survey and, uh, and looking into the archive, looking for archive material and hopefully blending, <coughs> blending the various techniques. Um, always seeking an aesthetic illustrative methodology uh, at a range of scales from uh, uh, your site, uh, site to landscape. Um, uh, I, I very rarely am I at the vanguard of anything, uh, but a couple of years back I got terribly excited about low altitude photography and the power of uh, remote controlled drones to put a camera in the sky uh, with true 360 degree flex flexibility. Uh, but, but clearly the, the reason that we're not fully packed in this auditorium is that the other half of the, of the, the audience is out playing with their own drones. Um, so I'm no longer at the vanguard, unfortunately. Still, so uh, it's, it's all about innovative uh, new techniques and uh, different angles from which to appreciate the past. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, Ed Martin, uh, uh, the uh, drone operator and photographer, standing uh, in the centre of a hut circle uh, on the wonderful uh, Hillfort Castle Ore. Uh, Andy stole some of my th thunder earlier on, but he didn't have this picture. Uh, a rectified uh, vertical of the Hillfort, where you really can start to see the, the complicated uh, goings-on, uh, multi-period uh, uh, house platforms and the likes within the fort uh, and the various uh, ramparts uh, surrounding it. Uh, the beauty of low altitude aerial photography is its 360 degree nature. You can get really close into a site uh, but, but also depicts it from almost any angle. Uh, this here um, at Castle Lower is in the White House Valley in uh, Dumfrieshire, Eastern Dumfrieshire. Uh, for, for a full description go to, to the, the wonderful Royal Commission inventory of Eastern Dumfrieshire. But uh, from where we got the, the, the plan from 1997, um, and uh, the, plan, the plan, I do like topographic survey, uh, and, and I've always liked a good hasher drawing. Um, but my, I, I was beginning to realize that my colleagues in the Forestry Commission didn't read it. They didn't really get this stuff. So why, why was I uh, bothering about uh, planning uh, our most significant sites? Why was I going on about a baseline record? And so uh, with the help of Rubicon Heritage, who we heard uh, Louise talk from uh, earlier, we created a, a, a terrain model, uh, so that's thousands of individual points being taken uh, by GPS rover, uh, and then draping the original Royal Commission plan, uh, which is excellent, on top. And I, I love this image because it's, uh, it really shows the, uh, it blends the, er the earlier uh, uh, aerial photograph, uh, the, the, the dramatic 3D nature of the hill fort, uh, with, the, with the archaeological interpretation, with the detail that the Commission surveyors were able to, to, to pull in of the various uh, house platforms uh, uh, and ring ditches in, inside. So it's, it's taking an archaeological plan uh, and giving it a real 3D oomph. Wondering how else can we use this technique? Um, and started to think perhaps uh, uh, er earlier uh, stuff such as the OS First Edition map. This is a, 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 a promontory fort uh, in uh, the A Forest, uh, which is a little bit, well, it's, it's just beyond Dumfrieshire. Um, it's about 30 meters in diameter. Uh, uh, it has an, in an incredibly huge uh, um, uh, ditch and rampart, uh, which was really well depicted by the Ordnance Survey uh, over 150 years back, um, and then had never been surveyed since. 
Uh, so that, which goes to some of the uh, people also ask uh, from, from my colleagues in Portugal, which is why are we doing these surveys? And in part, it's because uh, many of these sites have never been surveyed, have never had a, a detailed baseline record. Um, but I think this is, a, this is a wonderful image in that it, it really blends all the new um, with the, 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 the aesthetics of the early first edition survey um, with uh, the, the aesthetics of the terrain modeling, giving it 3D. Um, you can really start to see uh, the shadow, the scale of the rampart. So, uh, it's a whistle top stop tour. Uh, again, this is Ed uh, um, using his uh, remote controlled uh, drone at the hill fort of Castile McTuthal, um, which is above uh, 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 Kenmore in, uh, on Loch Tay. Um, it's a wonderful uh, uh, hill fort, but it's very difficult to appreciate on the ground. There's, as you can see, there's a, there's, there's a very large spread rampart, and then there's, there's various other earthworks, um, such as this one in the front, and there's a ditch down here. Um, the, and and the, the remote controlled, uh, or the, the low altitude aerial photography, has resulted in some, some good, good images, um, but it's still quite difficult to, to appreciate the, 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 the context, the landscape context of the fort. So with 3D modeling, uh, terrain modeling, um, but given the, uh, the spread of the ramparts uh, and the difficulty of, of drawing, uh, drawing out the archeology span on the site, we went with a very simple, simple approach to depicting, or the, 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 uh, to interpreting the archeology span on the ground. So you simply have uh, yellow or orange uh, uh, spreads of stone that, that the ditch is, is depicted and, and where we think the access in through the spread rubble is. Uh, but picking out in red where bits of wall facing uh, can still be seen. So the, the, you don't need to have hasher drawings and, and uh, traditional approaches uh, to pulling out the simple message, which is where are the, uh, the, the ramparts on this knoll. And a game of terrain modeling you can use uh, at many different angles and hill, by, by hill shading it uh, starting to pull out uh, the, 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 the topographic relief. This was then handed to uh, uh, an, artist, uh, an artist for the reconstruction, uh, which is going into the uh, Iron Age hill forts of uh, Perthshire, uh, which is being done by Davy Strachan of the Perth and Kinross Heritage Trust. And we were able to help by providing the survey, providing the image, um, and uh, we got our hill fort included within uh, what will be a very good uh, small mapping booklet. Uh, my instruction, given that there's never been any excavation uh, on the hill fort, uh, and we know very little about it other than the, uh, uh, the the topographic detail that we were able to pull out from the survey, uh, the instruction to the, the artist was simply, make it Lord of the Rings. And he's, uh, <laughs> he's done a pretty good job. Uh, again, pull, pulling out things like the, the, the likely timber laced uh, nature of the dry stone ramparts uh, and... Uh, Ah, I think he's done a really good job. Uh, moving closer to home, this is uh, Castle Now uh, on, uh, on the hill fort, uh, the hill fort on the top of Cardrona um, in uh, uh, the Tweed Valley. Um, it's it's an interesting site. It's very low spread uh, rubble banks. Um, it has it's all been robbed out uh, to give uh, the stone for a really well impressive uh, sheepfold in the centre. Uh, but as you can see, there are still elements of a. Uh, uh, wall facing that, that, that you can pick out um, on the ground. Uh, low altitude aerial photography uh, brings out uh, the detail in terms of uh, uh, aerial imaging. Uh, and this, in, in terms of uh, uh, rather than presentation, this is very much more for condition monitoring uh, so that we can keep an eye on whether or not there's any uh, erosion happening. Uh, it's a scheduled site, uh, so uh, it's, it forms, there's a management plan and it forms part of the forest design plan. So it's this kind of image that we would use for, for condition monitoring. Uh, and again, we have uh, the hill shaded terrain model. Uh, it's, it's not quite as clear as the others, but in this case, it has the uh, Royal Commission plan, which was the, the only previous survey of the site uh, from the uh, Peebleshire inventory of 1967, uh, where you can start to see, uh, uh, again, hill shaded relief um, bringing new light to, to an old archaeological plan. Uh, and that's that's really bled out a bit, but there there we have uh, the, the the modern survey um, here depicted uh, as uh, spreads of stone again with wall facing. Uh, but in this case, it's it's a, what's unusual about this as a uh, a topographic contour plan um, is that uh, it's uh, it's in the, the, the the surveyors have been able to hill shade uh, a, a two dimensional plan, um, which uh, 
it, I, I promise you it looks much better on my PC than, than on the screen here. Uh, go, moving over uh, the Tweed to uh, Castle Hill above Glen Tress, uh, here we have uh, the Royal Commission aerial photogra photograph from 1983, a really interesting uh, site uh, for uh, the archaeologist in terms of uh, the palisades, uh, various palisades, there are uh, quarry scoops, uh, there's a much larger uh, uh, now ploughed out um, rampart running around uh, within the, the, the fold of the the, the, the dry stone wall, and then there's various uh, ring ditches and, and house platforms inside. Uh, here we have a similar detailed hill shaded contour plan um, with uh, the image, the, 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 the interpretation of the, the where the palisade slots are, where the ring ditches are. Um, it's very much a traditional survey plan that you would see in uh, uh, in any archaeological publication, but in this case, the, the hill shading gives it uh, that, a, a little added extra. And there we have the terrain model um, with the same, the same detail, but now uh, uh, as an image um, very much in three dimensions. And taking it at a, at a landscape scale, you're able to do uh, similar, similar work. Here we have two, uh, two small um, enclosures uh, above Glen Tress, um, one with uh, a, a, a much larger um, uh, ditch and rampart, the one on the, uh, towards uh, the, uh, at the upper end of the hill, and then further down there's a smaller thing um, it, hidden in uh, native woodland in a wee enclosure. Uh, and you're able to take either drape uh, aerial photography on it, as the, the previous image, or here show uh, the actual contours. Uh, and again, hill shading uh, gives you an, a, a much greater appreciation of the two monuments uh, in, set together in their uh, landscape context. And there's a detail, uh, again, showing traditional to uh, ha uh, hasher, uh, the topographic interpretation, uh, but with the uh, emphasis on uh, the, the, the ramparts. But it's thinking about different scales, uh, we go from landscape to uh, very small, detailed stuff. And this is uh, a recent work by AOC. Um, at Ormeg uh, in Kilmartin, uh, uh, the wonderful prehistoric landscape of Kilmartin, uh, where we have a very well-preserved uh, panel of rock art. Um, uh, we, I think, fairly recently discovered in terms of uh, the archaeological record, sometime in the 70s, um, and then the, tr the trees have been taken off more recently, opening it up uh, into its landscape context. Uh, there we have Gemma uh, undertaking a very fine, uh, detailed laser scanning um, uh, by hand using the Faro arm. Uh, uh, this is a high resolution terrestrial laser scanning um, and also comparing the technique. So uh, on the, with all this stuff uh, of, of surveying uh, and the historic environment program on the Forest Estate, we seek to, uh, uh, to, to drive forward methodology, test and experiment as well. And so in this particular case, it had been uh, laser scanned in 2007. And we went back in 2008 uh, sorry, in uh, uh, just last year, earlier this year, 2014, seven years later, to see if the two uh, laser scans could be compared and whether there'd been any erosion have it as a result of the uh, trees being taken off around about and it being much more exposed to the elements. Um, but we were also trying to, to test the technique. Is it, is, it, uh, is it just as good to do uh, rectified photography? So here you have uh, the laser scanned mesh at the top so that creates a very detailed um, uh, surface model uh, by laser scanning, and then a photograph photogrammetric mesh uh, where they created a, a, a the similar sort of surface model, but simply by combining uh, lots and lots of uh, detailed photography. So this is quite an expensive technique uh, and, and difficult to, to lug the generators and the equipment around. Um, but if you were if we were to do a, a larger project of recording uh, uh, um, this kind of prehistoric rock art, uh, we would probably recommend pho uh, photogrammetry, much cheaper, easier to do. Uh, but a little bit less detail uh, in terms of uh, the actual uh, resolution. But comparing the, the, the two from uh, 2007 and, and 2014, so this, this uh, yellow patch is this patch in here of the main uh, uh, rosette. Uh, it's two data sets uh, uh, layered on top of each other, and you can see by the bar on the side, um, uh, if it's yellow, there's very little difference between the two. Um, uh, whereas if it's going into blue, um, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a greater de degree of difference in terms of depth. 
So the good news is there's no erosion happening at all, May, because uh, it's all yellow. And if there was uh, serious erosion happening, um, you would start to see areas of blue. So it's, it's an interesting technique, um, and I think a, a very successful wee project. But in all of these surveys, uh, I asked the, uh, the, the, the professionals to, to have a think about the creative uh, methodology. Um, we, I, I'm, also, I'm very keen to see archaeology used in uh, the creative process uh, and, and, and inspire uh, as well as record. And, and here we have a very interesting um, a, a oblique version uh, blend, looking, uh, using the, the, the surface model created by the high resolution laser scanning, uh, but in this case uh, looking at it without color and with color. Uh, so with color, you can obviously start to pick out where, where their lichens are, uh, whereas without color, it's, it's much clearer detail. But as an image, it's stunning. Um, and uh, in every survey, I'm looking for the stunning image as part of it. It's not a simple uh, uh, baseline record. Uh, but moving from the small scale uh, to uh, the large scale, um, we uh, commissioned some aerial laser scanning, or LIDAR, um, of this small patch uh, of the Forest Estate on Sky. Um, uh, it's Glen Brittle. Um, it's leased to a tenant farmer for grazing. There's, there's not going to be any uh, tree planting on it. Um, but when I visited the dune of Cracknish, which is up in the top left hand side, I'll I will zoom in there a little bit later, um, I realized what a wonderful landscape it was uh, and an ideal uh, opportunity to, to uh, test high resolution laser scanning um, from the air. Uh, so this, rather than using other people's data, which we often do as archaeologists, we, we would take data from SEPA, for example, which is possibly at uh, two to four points per meter. Uh, in this case, we commissioned it for archaeological reasons. We wanted a detail, detailed uh, record of the landscape. So it's 16 points per meter, uh, which has uh, resulted. So this is the, I'm going to zoom into this area here, uh, Cracknish Dune. This is that area, but this is... Uh, depicted as a sky view factor surface model. Uh, so rather than being shaded from any given uh, site, uh, um, uh, sort of indicating where the, where, where the, the, the sun is, uh, this is uh, depicting uh, height by, or, uh, by, by the amount of sky it can, at any given point can see, uh, which means you, you can start to pick out um, areas like the, the, the built townships, uh, the, 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 the lazy bedding all over this landscape, and the wonderful hill fort, um, sorry, dune of Cracknish itself, uh, poked out on the, the promontory there. So the, this uh, detailed surface model um, is available then to, to give to archaeological surveyors uh, to, to go in pre-armed with a, with a really detailed uh, record of the landscape to start to record things, find new things that we've, we, we think we've found uh, some interesting uh, other dunes further down the coast. Um, but this is as a pre a pre uh, uh, record uh, desk, to, uh, to, to allow proper desk based assessment pre-survey, uh, this is second, second to none. Again, we're zooming into this area uh, where we have the township and the dune, and we're about to swing around into uh, what, it, what you can do in terms of uh, terrain modeling from all laser scan data, uh, here draped with uh, uh, real-time captured um, pho pho photography, uh, where you can start to see the, the, the township really clearly, the lazy beds, and then uh, Cracknish Dune in the corner. Cracknish Dune, oh sorry, that's the, that's the township. And there we have Cracknish Dune, this time uh, depicted from the air. It's a, it's a really nice site in terms of uh, uh, surviving wall, uh, two phases of wall, there's another bit further down, um, and a rubble-filled entrance, uh, uh, and a, what a dramatic landscape poked out uh, with uh, Lewis in the background. Uh, 360 degree low altitude aerial photography again you can start to see the, 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 where the walls are, are, are bending round uh, a great record of the site there we have the same image but just depicting how many points are hitting the ground from this high resolution aerial laser scan at 16 points per meter uh, you can see that we're absolutely plastering the site uh, with laser scan data um, uh, from the air but we can also do it from the ground. Uh, and this is uh, the AOC uh, uh, orthographic uh, image uh, by, colored by height, uh, where we have uh, blue being higher than the purple further down. You can really start to see the impressive uh, rocky boss that this, uh, this dune sits upon. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're asking for uh, more simple, 
traditional so uh, style depictions uh, ready for uh, typo typological comparison, uh, easier to publish as well, that kind of thing. So uh, when, when, when commissioning this work, we're always thinking about the aesthetics, but also the various uh, uses that we can, we can put, put the, the, the results to. One of the uses being the picture of this exhibition, uh, where we have uh, 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 individual site, site uh, stories, I guess, uh, uh, explaining the site itself and the, and the various survey methodologies uh, that we have uh, put the, uh, uh, undertaken to record. Uh, this was the first one we did at Cracknish Dune. Uh, they go to all the various um, conferences uh, promoting the work of the, of the Forestry Commission, um, but uh, we've also had them uh, produce the smaller posters. So they've gone to local schools, they, they're dis displayed in, in uh, local libraries, um, they decorate district offices. It's all about raising awareness uh, and, and showing the importance of the archaeology, both internally uh, to my colleagues in the Forestry Commission, but also externally. And I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll agree that it's, a, it's quite a, a, it might be loud, but it's an effective way of communicating our good work. Uh, but also, we can use it for uh, other, um, more interesting offbeat left, uh, left field, um, we have jigsaws made up. This was for the Highland Family Heritage Festival. Uh, everybody loves a jigsaw. I thought, so why not? Let, let's see what we can use our surveys for. Um, and here uh, we have uh, the, the, the Dune first one to be completed. Uh, that's quite an easy one. Um, the, uh, the, the Cranish Dune as a jigsaw. And this was with uh, Arch, the archaeology for communities in the Highlands, uh, their Highland Family Heritage Festival. So, in conclusion, um, the benefits and objectives of archaeological measured survey and visualization include an enhanced archaeological record, the, the, um, uh, helping our colleagues in the historic environment records and in the national collections of the Royal Commission uh, with uh, detailed uh, baseline records of, uh, the, of our most significant archaeology on the National Forest Estate. We have a creative response as well that, that is both functional and aesthetic. Uh, so we're always looking for uh, 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 interesting images that can be used in, the, in a variety of, of media. Uh, the collection of baseline information uh, informs conservation management, uh, so it, it allows that protection and that conservation, uh, allowing detailed condition monitoring. Um, but it also, we, we help to encourage professional CPD by including with our commissions scope for the surveyors to, 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 to broaden fieldwork objectives, either by um, surveying sites that are, are, are similar but, but uh, out with the forest estate um, or uh, testing new, new methodologies uh, and techniques. Um, all of this goes to visibly demonstrate uh, and confirm the importance of our most significant archaeology. There is nothing like uh, having a team of archaeologists in flash jackets with a, a big expensive bits of a kit and equipment turning up on a site to really convince people that it's important and, and that it's worth uh, conserving. And again, it's always about um, enhance or uh, trying to enhance uh, the presentation uh, of both methodology, the, the, the actual survey techniques, and of archaeology itself. And that's me. Thank you very much. <laughs>